moment, it's half past ten, so we'll just make a start. Uh, something I would like to say. Since becoming leader of this council, and in the face of many challenges over the last six years, I have always personally strived to engage with and work with other political groups on this council. To serve, to do my best for Dumfries and Galloway, its values and its people. After the election in 2012, no party had an overall majority, and the interests of ensuring a strong, stable and principled way forward for Dumfries and Galloway Council, I took my group into a partnership with the SNP. I believe that that was the right decision, and my colleagues unanimously agreed to sign up to that partnership. I want to take this opportunity to say it has been a pleasure working alongside all ten of you, and I th thank Brian in particular for his patience and professionalism throughout these difficult times. This Council has benefited from the, that course of action. We have made good progress, as I stated last Wednesday. We are now recognised as one of the leading councils in Scotland. Churchill once said, Politics is the ability to foretell what is going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month and next year, and to have the ability afterwards to explain why it didn't happen. Members, hindsight is a great thing and this chamber does not need me to say why it didn't happen. Churchill also said, you have enemies. Good. That means you've stood up for something sometime in your life. However, he also said that it's not enough that we do our best, but sometimes we have to do what is required. And members, I have done my best, but it is a requirement that business on this council move forward. And to that end, members, it has been my duty to ensure an administration can be formed to make the important choices for the future of our region. We no longer have a mandate to lead this council, and I pass the responsibility and privilege to others. I understand that an agreement has been reached between the SNP and the Labour Party, and I wish them all well in continuing to take this Council forward. It has been a huge privilege to be a leader of this Council, and I am honoured to have the continued support of my honest and trustworthy colleagues, Patsy Gilroy, Gail McGregor, Jill Dykes, Graham Nicholl, Ian Blake, Finlay Carson and Dennis Mayer. I want to thank all my friends and colleagues, whatever political persuasion, for their support. The Chief Executive, Senior Directors and all staff for their assistance, dedication and commitment over the years. Finally, to the newly formed Independent Conservative Group, I would like to quote Winston Churchill for the last time. However beautiful the strategy, you should occasionally look at the results. As success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Thank you, Leader. It is a matter of deep regret to me that we've got to this stage. I think everyone who knows you would agree with me that if I were to describe you as a loyal person, that would be a fair description. So it is deeply disappointing to me that we have been brought to this situation by such a public demonstration on the part of seven elected members of what in my view can only be described as an absolute lack of loyalty. I want to pay tribute to you for the way you have led this administration and this Council, not just over the past 16 months, but for the six years you have done the job through a lot of difficult times. I think that anyone would agree that we have come to a very long way as a Council since the dark days of the Best Value Audit, and you deserve your share of the credit for that progress. You have made a huge contribution to the work of this Council and the wider region we all serve, and I am confident you will do more in the future. Leader, a new administration must be formed, so I will also 
now step down to allow that process to take place. Thank you. Uh, in light of the two resignations, uh, the Council requires to appoint a Chairman for this particular meeting. Could I have nominations for the position of Chairman, please, for this meeting only? May I please nominate Councillor George Prentice and at the same time formally uh, intimate the resignations of the SNP Chairs and Vice Chairs at this time? I'm happy to second that. I think George is absolutely the right person to uh, come forward. I would just like to also intimate the resignation of the chairs and vice chairs of the Dumfries and Gallery Conservatives and Unionist Council Group. But can I say, as a member of the class of 99, and there's a few of us here, when Ivor came in as a councillor, um, he was a young, very young man, and he still is, but I wish him so much health and happiness after this debacle, which is what it has been. It has not been an easy time for the last six months. We know where the blame for that lies, and it will continue to lie there. But I want you to go home, be with your family, get better, and come out fighting. But well done. Ben, you're back. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for the chair of this meeting? No other nominations on that basis. Could I ask? Councillor Prentice, to assume the chair, please. Thank you very much for, for the confidence the Council has placed in me this morning, you know, to be put in this position, which uh, I really didn't uh, particularly want. But uh, anyway, we better get on with it. Alec, the said an apology. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I have apologies from Councillors Ferguson and McClung. Councillor Carson is not present, but I understand will be joining the Council uh, later in the morning. Okay. Uh, any declaration of interest from anybody? Everybody. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I've just got to, uh, to say a one sentence. Actually, I've got to say, I'm, you know, I'm extremely disappointed in the, the events which have actually brought me into this position today. You know, and I, I think it's, I think, in actual fact. You know, it's a sad day for the Prison Galway Council, uh, and uh, I certainly am not relishing uh, this. Once I once I get back out of this chair, you know, and get down to, get down to the proper business. But I am very disappointed that to be here to have to do this. Actually, anyway, uh, you know, we need to appoint a new council leader. So I'll, I'll look for nominations for the council leader, Ted, Ted Thompson. Thank you, Chair. For some time now, um, Labour has proposed that the Council be led by a progressive coalition, which involves Labour and the SNP. Um, that proposal has been agreed by both the Labour and the SNP groups, but it is, of course, subject to agreement of the full Council. I'd wish to propose that as a way forward, to formally propose the leader of the Labour group, Ronnie Nicholson, as leader of the Council. Happy to second. Thank you very much, both. That's Councillor Collins seconding that. Any other nominations for, for leader? No. Can I therefore invite Councillor Nicholson to assume the chair?
Thank you, George, and uh, thank you, members, for your support. Also, as to place on record, uh, my sincere thanks to Ivor for his time as leader. I'm not going to pretend that we don't have fundamental political differences in that politics, but no one here today could doubt the immense commitment Ivor brought to the role of council leader over the past six years. I hope that in this post I can show the same level of dedication to the people of Dumfries and Galloway that you have shown. Over the past few months, politically and indeed personally, Ivor had to endure uh, a great deal. But he dealt with these challenges with considerable integrity and in setting out the path for a new administration today, I hope he will continue to agree to continue to play an important role in the Council, leading the scrutiny of that new administration. If I can pay Ivor a compliment, which I know he may not like, but is high praise indeed from a Labour politician, is far too much of a gentleman to be a Tory. <laughs> Taking on the role of council leader is a great honour, and with it comes great responsibility. Although a Labour-led council is something I have strived for, the post of council leader is not. In many ways, I accept this position in order to deliver that Labour-led administration, and with it the priorities of the many people who put their trust in Labour last May. Our Council faces a huge number of challenges. As I have said on many occasions, our local economy is in a deeply perilous place with unemployment now consistently above the national average, in particular amongst young people, and we now have the unenviable record as the lowest paid region in Scotland. Over the next two years alone, our Council faces the need to make cuts of nearly £30 million. The days of simply trimming the edges of budgets have gone, and our local communities face the prospect that many of the services they have come to expect will simply not be there in the future. I therefore give this personal commitment to everyone here today and to the people of Dumfries and Galloway. The Council I lead will make building our local economy our number one priority, and in making those tough budget decisions, I will be guided by a personal commitment to protect the least well-off and the most vulnerable city citizens in our communities. I do not underestimate the difficulties we face in meeting those challenges, and no one in this room has a monopoly on good ideas. It's been a source of frustration that sometimes good ideas have not always been taken forward by the Council because of who they came from. That won't be the case under my leadership. This will be an inclusive council in which all members will be invited to bring their ideas to the table. And I give a personal pledge that they will be listened to. I also give a personal pledge that the views of the local communities we represent will be at the heart of the decisions this council makes. All of us should never lose sight of the fact that it is the people we represent in our wards that puts us in the positions of responsibility we all find ourselves in. It is important today that we are not distracted by any further events of recent weeks and that we maintain the continuity of council business as far as possible. I would therefore ask members to now agree to the appointment of a deputy leader of the council and would ask members for nominations for that post. Thank you, leader. I would like to nominate uh, Councillor Brian Collins as deputy leader of the council. I'm quite happy second. Any other nominations? I usually get cut off at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so, no other nominations um, for then Councillor Collins is appointed. It's our um, intention today to seek nominations for other office bearers, senior councillors' posts today, and formally nominate the positions indicate. You know, we've got a slate, and there's a paper copy of the nominations in circulation just now. I think.
Councillor Maitland. Would you allow me, before we do recess, um, Leader, just to say a couple of words, um, because I haven't up till now. I wanted to find out what was happening <clears throat> and to be clear. And I'm very glad that we do now have a clear way forward. Um, uh, I just want to add my views that Iva has led the Council in a calm and conciliatory way, and I commend him for it. Uh, his measured words are entirely symptomatic of his approach, and the independent group would have expected nothing less. So I thank him for that, and I thank him for the last six years. Looking forward, Leader, um, I think you would expect nothing else of um, the independent uh, uh, group of uh, members to be uh, helpful, consensual, probing, tough, and determined. And uh, I look forward to working with you in those terms. It won't always be easy, let me assure you, but I certainly um, will, uh, will assist, as I always have. And I, I speak, I think, for this group of five. Thank you. Thank you, and I look forward to your interventions. Could you pass the documents around, please? And if you pass the policy document as well. If everybody has these documents, there is also a, a policy document going round. Um, with, uh, I, would, I would like to propose a recess of 60 minutes for everybody to have a look at the policy document slate. We work at 10 to 12. Leader, could we have clarification, please? Yep. Uh, on the list you've just passed around, uh, the asterisk, also Provost of Dumfries, I fail to see an asterisk anywhere. On the paper you passed around, there's an asterisk, and it says also Provost of Dumfries. I fail to see an asterisk anywhere in the name. Have that slate. The, the, it's usual for the, in, in this deal, that the area chair, so we're looking at the area chair taking over the provost. Leader, uh, I'm, leader, we haven't got that piece of information yet. We have not slate. The copies, the copies are in the way, so it's an hour, so we're working here at 5 to 12.
Thank you. Opportunity to consider the nominations from the administration. Uh, just to confirm that the proposal uh, is that the rule of the province be carried out the chair of the Ministry of Committee. Do we have any other nominations? Councillor Yeah, Chair, before we move on to nomination, we're just going to have a few words and it'll be short and you'll be pleased to hear. You know, I want to place on record as well our thanks to Ivor. Uh, one of the things was that he was always, his door was always open, he was always cooperative in at least listening uh, to us, anything that we took to him, and he replied timorously to uh, any correspondence. I'll not say he always agreed with us or delivered on it, however, he, he, he did listen. Uh, to us, uh, uh, and I thank him for it uh, in, in that respect. Uh, Chair, if I could just uh, also congratulate you in, in becoming leader of the council, and indeed uh, the, the document that you have produced, uh, I welcome, and there's a lot to be commended in it. Uh, good start in life. Uh, Preparing our uh, young people and adults uh, for employment, if indeed we can... Councillor Scobie, if you, if you can go, go through the nominations just now, and we'll I'll come, come, to, come to into chair. detail on that later on. Okay. If you allow me to come back Do you have yes. any other nominations? No? I can confirm that the proposals table are carried. The, the council is entitled to agree 16 senior councillors at this stage, the administration is proposing 15. Can I ask that this list be circulated to members and agreed? OK, I'll give you a few minutes to read them for you. Enough time to have a look through. Um, Jane. Thank you. Um, could I possibly just ask a question? Um, I'm very surprised to see um, that there is not a um, chairmanship, a vice chairmanship there of education. 
because they really should. And in addition to which, um, I would suggest to you that there is no um, uh, recognition um, equally ditto uh, with uh, the Stuart Area Committee. Um, and I don't think that's actually correct. I think that should be. So I would propose that you, uh, you name um, Councillor Davidson in that. It seems to be entirely appropriate that that should be there. Education is a colossal, a colossal job. See on the education, there is uh, Councillor Davidson, the uh, Vice Chair of Education. And a leader could uh, perhaps help. Members are looking at two different lists. There is one list which includes the chairs and vice chairs, and the other list includes the senior councillors. You do not necessarily have to be a senior councillor to be a chair or a vice chair. If you look at the two lists in, con in conjunction, uh, the administration group has, has made their proposals. There is a vice chair of education. There is also a vice chair of statutory. That uh, list was tabled and agreed just two minutes ago. I, I think I think the, the uh, I think we're a little confused. Then what we're suggesting um, the 16 senior councillors, if I've got this right, um, we're talking about positions with money attached, aren't we? Right. Well, all I'm simply suggesting is that I think that the vice chairmanship of education and the stewardry area committee can be rolled into one and should be a senior councillor, and I propose Councillor Davidson for that. Thanks, thanks, Leader. Um, it's nice to know that one is held in at least some degree of esteem. Um, uh, I'd, rather, I, I, I'd much rather that this is not put to a vote of any description. I am entirely content with the situation. Uh, I do assure you I don't think that the public purse can afford my hourly rate in any case. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Understanding is that Councillor Davison just declined uh, Councillor Maitland's kind invitation. Therefore, a, a nomination can't obviously hold. Anyone else? Councillor Brody. Yeah, I think it's got to a degree of consistency here because there's only two chairs have got a senior position in the council. I think the, the, the I think the east and west are going to be regarded in the same light. I think we need the four chairmen to be to be uh, senior councillors. And I think you should go away and think that one again. Come back with a different list. So can I just clarify? Uh, the chair of the Committee committee's really a senior councillor. The vice the, the, the chair of the Area Committee has already declined any renovation. As the mover of the motion, I am entitled to sum up. Could no, you haven't. Got, there's no second to that. No, uh, if you got a, if you got a point of order or not, and if you have got a point of order, what is that point of order? And if you haven't, uh, the point of order is that we need to follow the proper procedures. And as the mover which of the motion, point of order, as Councilor the mover Brody, of the which motion, procedures? If, if you wish me to sum up, I will. No, <laughs> Councillor Smith. <laughs> to help Councillor Brodie out. You can't sum up an emotion that's effectively been declared null and void because the person you're nominating has declined your kind invitation. Therefore, can we maybe actually get on with the business of the Council leader and, and stop playing silly games and, and move on? Can I have a point of order now then, Chair? If you name a point of order, yes. Okay. Right, what is the, the point of order? I think my, order, my motion is competent. Uh, the the senior position councillors don't need to take up the remuneration, although they're act new councillors. So I think that's no point of order, Councillor Brody. Moving on to the uh, the, the senior councillors, 
uh, are they agreed or not? Yeah. Good. Right. Turning to the, um, the partnership agreement between Labour and SNP groups, which has been circulated, I'm conscious that we are a year into a new council and work is ongoing on the council's priorities through the various department business plans. I do not therefore propose to rewrite all of those business plans, and I do wish to keep the disruption to our council to a minimum. However, I am clear that the, the priority is off building our local economy, protecting the most vulnerable in our communities, and improving the way we work as a council to make it more inclusive will all be taken forward by administration I lead. I have therefore tabled a number of amendments to the council's priorities, which are shown in this document in red, and would ask that these be agreed. Councillor Scobie. Thanks, Chair, and as I said earlier, uh, I welcome the document and a lot to be commended in the document. I don't know the significance or the, 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 the different colours. However, do you know? Uh, yeah, putting Dr. Jason Galloway first, a good start in life, preparing our young people for adulthood and employment, and as I say, uh, let's hope we can bring about some uh, employment for our uh, young people and indeed others to find themselves unemployed on the care for older and vulnerable people. Again, a lot to be commended, and as I say, I don't know the significance of the colours, but, you know, provide support and advice for people facing the implications of the welfare reform, which I uh, trust will include the Council's no eviction policy uh, for people who cannot afford to pay, indeed, the, the, the bedroom tax, and th that we reinforce that today. Uh, there are a lot of pluses in here, develop a comprehensive anti-poverty strategy. That, I, I well remember that that was one of the first ones that, 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 that uh, were done away with in, in terms of uh, the, the anti-poverty way back in the, in the 90s. Uh, working towards uh, the eradication of fuel poverty, which many of, of our people in Dumfries and Galloway uh, face, and also build on our proposals uh, for looked after children uh, and kin kinship carers. Uh, indeed, uh, it goes on in terms of the, the, our ability to, to lobby to improve that. There's also the stimulate our economy, and, and I'm pleased to see the investment in Stronar and the Loch Ryan uh, waterfront also chair uh, the railway uh, to uh, and from Stranraer. Uh, there is further on protect and sustain our uh, environment and there's reference to the, the future of the railway in Stranraer. I think the important, uh, while those are all important, indeed other parts of the document, there is the, the, the last page, we will improve the way the council works and there is a review of the council's committee structure to maximise councillors' involvement. And I would hope, uh, Chair, from, from your position and, uh, and your experience and my uh, dealings with you, that this will include uh, the maximization of councillor involvement and indeed that we will agree today on uh, the very m uh, minimal of 11 member committee. And I'm happy to, to move that, Chair, uh, that that be the case so that we can involve, maximize the, the, the council uh, councillor's involvement. And I would hope in your first challenge, uh, Chair, that that is indeed what uh, you mean in that uh, statement. And both the, you uh, as Labour leader and the SNP as, uh, and both as the administration actually mean that. Uh, and I would hope that we can agree on, 11 me on the minimum for 11 member committee. Happy to move, Chair. Happy to second, Chair. Uh, Councillor Scobie, we took cognizance of your uh, previous motion uh, when he said nine, as you will notice within the proportional papers that went round, it does not give you a place on that. I know that the non it doesn't give you a place, but that's what you asked for. That's why we included that in there. The only committees at the moment are ad hoc subcommittees, and they've got a limited uh, lifespan, and they're sevens. You know. But you, you mentioned yourself, you mentioned about the, the review of committees. Uh, in the report coming back, we'd urge everyone for inclusiveness. If they have any, uh, you know, things they want to add 
taken on board, then they can add them and it, the, the paper will come back. I think it's before December. Before December. If I could get back in that chair, uh, your good grace. Uh, while, yeah, uh, the previous had a different uh, scenario, uh, different number crunching. This one that has come back uh, gives us 24 uh, member administration, and we have the document before us. Uh, and uh, that one uh, was not voted on it. You, you indeed moved a deferral or, or, or that meeting to this one. Uh, we have put forward an 11, uh, and as I say, uh, that's the motion. And happy to see it. You know, if, if it's a review, then the paper comes back. But it is, I, I am moving a um, minimum of an 11 uh, member committee and, and hope that there is cognizance uh, of that and, and it comes back as that and that this council will agree, particularly the, 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 the new administration uh, of SNP Labour or Labour SNP uh, and that's my motion here. Um, I, would, I would like to move that we wait the, the subcommittee has got to give you on and we refer that to the, the subcommittee. Have a second. Councillor Maitland. Um, sorry, I wondered if you wanted to do with that particular issue first. Very happy to. Councillor Smith. Chair, we actually don't even know what the committees will be as a result of that review, and that review has not actually been published yet and won't actually come to full council to December. So we're actually talking about committees that we don't actually know what they'll be. Um, so it seems rather premature to take it out of context and actually take it um, out with that particular report. Quite happy that everybody's views are included in that report when it comes forward, but that's the time to actually take that, that particular issue. So we actually know what committees we're talking about. Councillor Blake. Thank you, Leader. I've got some difficulty understanding the changes to your document that are in colour because I have a black and white copy. Mm -hmm. well, I believe some people haven't got the coloured uh, red. C could you? Okay. Councillor Davidson, you want to done? No? Councillor McGregor? Thank you, Leader. Um, I've had a look through the document. I think an awful lot of what's highlighted in red is already in train and already being done. I think it, it does us no harm to have it embedded um, and implicit within the document. And I personally am very happy to support it. Councillor Hislop? Thank you, Leader. Um, I think what you'll find is you have a full programme of work here to do. I like the fact that a lot of the work that we took forward in the previous administration is still included in there. Um, I think it'll, it's an ambitious programme. Um, over the next couple of years, it might struggle with the fact that uh, funds and resources aren't there, but we'll see how we can work with you to make sure that we can deliver as much as we can. Okay, Councillor Cuthers. Thank you, Leader. Just uh, I suppose first to, to recognise and, and congratulate, you, congratulate yeah. yourself sorry, on, on your, your appointment as leader. Uh, the Independent Conservative and Unionist group on the council will, will act as a, as a clear opposition and we're happy to do, to do that. As far as what Councillor Scobie is putting forward as a, as a motion in regards to the, the proportionality, happy to support what you propose at this moment so long as we get a reassurance that we can look to uh, potentially readdressing that as time goes forward through uh, the committee system before December. As Mark got to point out that you, you've actually got three committees which have a full membership of 11, and therefore to be prescriptive and say all subcommittees should have 11, we preclude uh, three committees from ever having subcommittees. So I think your motion is, uh, is not competent.
Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, I, well, I think first of all, I think I want to congratulate you already on a wonderfully united administration, because we've been told by a Labour Party member that an SNP member would not be accepting remuneration. So congratulations on that uh, level of being together already. Um, I would like to uh, go back to um, this uh, this document here, and with the best will the world leader, actually, although um, many members have said, yes, there are things which we can agree with, and I think probably that's absolutely right, but you know, not having had a chance properly to, to, um, to look at these things, uh, realising that there is absolutely no mention of the Maccas or the Stuartry in this, none whatsoever, uh, although I do see that suddenly we do have um, a fly-in of the other areas, Stranraer, Loch Ryan, uh, rejuvenated regional capital, that goes without saying, uh, strategic business locations, Gretna, Lockerbie and Allen, and the regeneration of Upper Nisdale, which of course would take quite a lot of... Um, of uh, resources, and with which I am not in disagreement. But at this stage, I I'd like to know whether there's been any officer input into this that you know what you might be taking on. Um, and I would suggest at this stage that um, we, we note this, we note this, and get a report back to the next suitable committee um, to consider all the issues within it. So that, thank you, in the spirit of you looking for our input, our appropriate and useful input, which I'm very happy to try and help you with, um, but we must know what we're doing. So if that's all right, please, I would really suggest that we get a report about it to the next appropriate committee. Thanks very much, Leader. Um, I know obviously the document that Councillor Maitland voted for previously didn't actually make any different reference at all to the structure than the current document in front of us. So, interesting change of position from Councillor Maitland. I think it will come as a bit of a surprise to residents of Dalbeatty that they're also being told that their new Lamb and Town campus isn't in the structure, if you believe everything that Councillor Maitland just actually said. The four listed um, areas of regeneration, of course, are included in the Council's regional economic strategy and have been agreed by this Council. It was agreed, obviously, before. I was a councillor, but it certainly wasn't. It was agreed when Councillor Maitland uh, was a councillor. So she agreed to the four priority regeneration areas of Sunran and Loch Ryan, uh, Dumfries, the Gretna, Loch Ryan and Corridor, and also Upper Nistel. Obviously, the, the council's regional economic strategy is currently being reviewed, um, and no doubt people have put forward um, proposals at that time. But if she was to check the wording of the previous priority document that she voted for, she'll see that. The only difference is there are specific references, whereas the previous document said um, take forward the, the strategic priorities um, that were agreed in the regional economic strategy. There's no difference at all between this document, therefore, and the previous one, other than actually naming those particular particular areas. So I'm a little bit surprised that the, um, the previous document was acceptable with Councillor Maitland, but the, uh, the new one um, is actually um, somehow not. Okay, Councillor Brother. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'd like, just like to congratulate you. Before we find out the last part, I think I should have congratulated you on your position. Um, I'm sure that you'll encompass the rules of fairness which you sought when you were sitting on, the, on these benches earlier. There are some very good points in this document, but it's far from being a professional document. And I think I would support Councillor Maitland saying, go away, revise it, and get, get it right. Get it in a professional form that we can all support. At the moment, it's not that way. As an English teacher, I can just about uh, forgive you for abolishing the rules of the apostrophe and we will improve the way the council works. I hope, hope that we will be professional in our work. I hope we will uh, not be joining, not be turning into a branch of the cooperative government or the cooperative as put there and the way the way the improvement the council improves. I think there is some flaws in the wording of the document, and we don't know it, especially in educational policy. We have got to get things right and be professional what we're saying. We talk about striving to protect lower class sizes and provide adequate lens of support. We've got to get the terminology right. We've got to be a bit, a bit more stronger than using the word adequate. So we have to consider things like appropriate additional support for learning. Right, uh, so I, I could go through the document and say... So, uh, Councillor Brady, because you've got two minutes and you'll just pass that. 
Uh, <laughs> and uh, I will support Councillor Maitland's amendment that we take this away, look at, bring a polished document, not, not something that's, that that's, has got the whiff of the woodbine packet about it. Thank you. Right, what I intend to do now, and I notice Councillor Scobie has got his hand up there, uh, but what I tend to do now is we'll take the vote on the, the committees of 11 first from Councillor Scobie. Councillor Scobie. Yeah, Chair, if it's uh, of any help, I'm happy to... Uh, well, I, I will withdraw on the basis of the assurance you gave that that will be something that will be... there will be cognizance taken of the 11-member committee and that it will come back uh, as a report. Uh, so uh, I will withdraw the, the motion on that basis of, of the assurance given. Right, Councillor Maitland's got a motion forward. Uh, thank you, Leader. Councillor Maitland, as I understand it, seconded by Councillor Brodie, has moved that the Council note the Administration's priority docu priorities document and receive a further report to full Council on its, its implications. I would move that we agree it. Second. Thank you, Leader. You have a motion in the moment. The motion is with Councillor Maitland, seconded by Councillor Brodie, and that is that the, the Council notes the Administration's priorities documents and receive a further report on its implications to a future meeting. The amendment by yourself, Leader, seconded by the Deputy Leader, is that the document be approved. Are you ready to proceed to the vote, Leader? Yep. Amendment. Amendment. Motion. Motion. Right, Councillor Bro Brodie. Motion. Councillor Ian Carruthers. Motion. Councillor Karen Carruthers. Motion. Councillor Carson is not present. Councillor Davidson. Amendment. Councillor Dempster. Amendment. Councillor Dick. Amendment. Councillor Diggle. Councillor Drybra. Amendment. Councillor Dykes. Councillor Ferguson not present. Councillor Forster. Amendment. Councillor Geddes. Councillor Gilroy. Councillor Grimm. Councillor Yen. Amendment. Councillor Lever. Amendment. Councillor McCautry. Amendment. Councillor McClung. Councillor McComb. Motion. Councillor McCutcheon. Amendment. Councillor McGregor. Amendment. And Ivor Hislop will not be on your list, so can you remember him at some point? Yeah, I won't. I'll come back, sorry. Provost McKee. Amendment. Councillor Maitland. Motion. Councillor Mayo. Motion. Councillor Marshall. Amendment. Councillor Martin. Amendment. Councillor... Oh, sorry. I'll put Councillor Hislop there. Councillor Hislop. Councillor Nicholl. Amendment. Councillor Ogilvy. Amendment. Councillor Peacock. Motion. Councillor Prentice. Motion. Councillor Scobie. Amendment. Councillor Smith. <laughs> Councillor Stitt. Councillor Syme. Amendment. Councillor Tate. Motion. Councillor Stephen Thompson. Amendment. Councillor Ted Thompson. Amendment. Councillor Tuckfield. Motion. Councillor Wits. Amendment. Councillor Wood. Amendment. Councillor Wiper. Amendment. The amendment is carried by 29 votes to 15. Okay, I'll move now on uh, all the proportionality. I've also circulated a document uh, prepared by governance on proportionality, and I would ask members also to agree with this. Councillor 
Councillor Connors. Councillor Scobie retracted his motion, uh, and it was, I did ask, would, would it come back to a further committee? Just to get the reassurance that it, that will come back to a, a committee before December. Yes. No other comments? No, that's fine. Uh, about, um, it also has that the groups now uh, provide as soon as possible to governance with the relevant list of members for each committee now. I'm conscious that uh, this afternoon there was a scheduled meeting on planning, housing and environment service. Uh, like the fact that proportional in the committees has changed now and therefore the membership will change one of these committees. I can ask members to agree that this afternoon's meeting be rearranged to take account of the new membership of that committee so they get a chance. Could I ask on that, uh, and obviously uh, it's coming back to the December meeting, you know, uh, it's the size of those committees uh, that, that's important, and I understood that you're coming back, uh, it's uh, some guidance on the size of those committees, and that the report coming back uh, will take cognizance, as I've already said, on an 11-member committee. Can I say we've just agreed the proportionality on the, the, the committees, not the, the, the report and the review, yeah, that's you know, whatever that review comes up with, uh, you know, then we'll, the council will have a, a look at that. It's that clarification I seek, Chair, because what, what we've got is, a, if I'm looking at the correct document, I've got proportionality on the basis of 47 uh, going on to say on committee of 19, then 11, then 9, then 7. Uh, you know, I, I, what is it we're agreeing uh, is the clarity I seek. What we agreed was proportionality on this. Well, what we agreed was the proportionality on them size of committees. Then I still seek the clarification on what size the committees will be to make nomination to, to the, the, the committees that have been listed. Sorry, sorry Councillor Scobie, but we, we won't know that until the actual review and the, the, uh, it comes back to committee before December. Okay. Okay, so we've got to get on the, the, the rearrangement of the plant house environment. But one of the things is, sorry. Sorry. No, just when you're speaking about committees, you've got uh, police, fire and rescue on Thursday. Will, be, will that be going ahead or put off? I don't see any reason why not if the memberships are available then. In the past, uh, I've been critical of the failure to be inclusive when the council has appointed members to outside bodies. Uh, with members' agreement, I would therefore ask that we convene a further meeting of full council within the next 14 days and receive a report in the membership of outside bodies with a view to take, making that membership more inclusive for members. Okay, I think that concludes that item. If we, if, if we move on to item four, you, you have a paper in front of you. However, uh, I do appreciate that it's now out of date and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Board has obviously now met to discuss their position. Um, after the meeting, the following statement appeared on the board's website. The board agreed the paper with one amendment that the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service would retain three fire controls, one of which would be Johnson. Further work was requested by the board to identify the location of the two other controls from a choice of Edinburgh and Dundee, Aberdeen and Inverness. The SFRS agreed to report back on these options in the near future. This basically means that the Dumfries Fire Control Room will close. Fifteen staff uh, we'll have, this will be impacted by the, the local way. 15 staff locally will, will have an impact on them. The, the Chief Fire Officer has visited staff both pre and post decision last week. The timescale for implementation is April 20th, sorry, is April 2014 and staff being offered voluntary severance, voluntary retirement, redeployment, retraining or re relocation. At the Police and Fire and Rescue Subcommittee on the 3rd October, the National Board members, Grant Toms and Jimmy Campbell, Vice Chair, will attend along with the ACO, David Boyle, 
Service Delivery Director West. As a council, uh, one of our priorities is that we will maintain the safety and security of our region with two commitments. Strive to maintain the crewing levels in the fire service and campaign to locate police and fire central support staff in Dumfries and Galloway. In addition, our local fire and rescue plan states that one key aim of reform is to strengthen the links between fire and service rescues service and the communities they serve. Clearly, it's disappointing news locally, and I would open it up to members to ask how they wish the council to respond. Councillor Smith. Th thanks, Leader. I mean, it's obviously deeply disappointing news, but I, I think that most people won't be surprised. What, what I do find, though, is the actual specific decision that the board made really quite extraordinary. The the board seem to have taken a position that there hasn't been enough consultation with staff, but actually only if you live north of Perth. There seems to be more consultation over the location of, of, of a, a fire control room in the northeast of Scotland, Aberdeen, Inverness, wherever, Dundee, wherever they wish to, to locate that, and they want to have further consultation on that particular issue. But at the same time, they've decided there should be absolutely no consultation whatsoever in relation to the west and south of Scotland. Now, we were promised that the fire service would be a Scotland-wide fire service. But if you look at the location of almost all the support services, whether it's training centres, uh, whether it's the, 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 uh, the control rooms, whether it's the new HQ, um, whether or not it's, it's ITCT centres, every single one of them is north of the central belt. There isn't a single location south of the central belt being proposed by a so-called Scotland-wide fire service. I think that's an issue that, that, that concerns me greatly. Um, and it's one that, that, as you say, based on the priorities of this council, we need to be taken forward with members of a fire board who seem to think that they only represent the central belt and the northeast of Scotland. And I think that's an issue that needs to be taken, taken forward. It's whether or not we take that forward um, formally um, by writing to members of the fire board expressing a concern over this, or it's whether or not we leave it to members of the police um, and fire committee to, to raise this with those that I think you indicated were coming to the meeting on the 3rd of October. But I do think we have to set down a marker over the fact that, that this is supposed to be a Scotland-wide fire service and all the support services are in the central belt and in the north. And we all know exactly what's likely to happen next. The next one on the hit list is likely to be the police control room as well. And we need to be making it clear that we have to ensure that, that public sector employment and jobs are actually circulated around the whole of Scotland, not just in these particular areas. And I'm open to suggestions as to how we take that forward, um, either formally by writing to the members of the board or, or in another way. Okay, um, Councillor Dempster first. Then. Thanks, Chair. For me, it's a particularly sad day and a, and, and a sad announcement, if you like. I was a, a serving officer in the recent Galloway Fire Service, and it, it was important that we knew the coordinating staff and, and the skill they had, and recognised the skill they had in coordinating crews and appliances, and that would be more than apparent at the Lockerbie situation. And I feel it's the start of an asset stripping a, a practice that, that, that will bring nothing but to despair to this area. We have a, an excellent training facility at the Garrach, and I think we need to protect areas like that to ensure that there is some a life left in Dumfries and Galloway Fire Service, and that we're not just some satellite unit that services the, the, the greater a central belt. We had a very efficient and well-organised organisation here, and whilst it may have been appropriate to make it into a single service, it's not appropriate to asset strip on the back of that and to leave this region bereft of nothing more than a few appliances and, and crews. And I would hope this council sees some way of challenging the decision and trying to ensure, well, you know, can change the decision it's made, but trying to ensure that uh, we are recognised as a region in our own right and, and in that region there should be certain services and training properties and sections left within it, and I would hope the Council would do that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ogilvie, then Councillor Dykes. Uh, thanks, Chair. <clears throat> Those of us that sat on the Pathfinder, um, we asked this question several times about the future. Now, it was only April that the, the single uh, fire 
and rescue service came into being. We had a very interesting visit with the, the board members at the Garrick, and uh, they were very impressed because we're well, only one of the, the areas that has the heavy am animal rescue and inland water rescue, which uh, was held up as a good practice. The reason I'm saying that is if you look at uh, under 3.2 in the first bullet point, a single national training facility is supported by a number of single and multi-scenario facilities across the service. Now, I don't know what that means, and I was hoping the author was here, uh, Donna Mouse, to see what that really meant. You know, it's a bit wordy. Going back to what uh, Councillor Smith was saying, I think if we're going to make a response, it has to be this council. We don't have a board anymore, so um, a subcommittee, and no disrespect, wouldn't have the same clout as the full council if we're going to make a, a representation to the fire board. And I think uh, it would be this full council's duty to make that representation, whatever that looks like. Thank you, Chair. Mr Haswell. Uh, thanks, Leader. Can, can I say to Councillor Ogley, the, the, the words are not ours, they're a straight left from the Fire Board's report. Uh, I'll leave that to members to determine, sir. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting the list mixed up, but it's Councillor Peacock. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd just like to actually concur with a lot of being said before us. Um, I'm very disappointed that the board has gone ahead with this decision, um, as has been pointed out, um, forming a, a single fire service. Um, we did, um, behind the scenes, think that this type of action would, would happen in it, but it's very, very disappointing that the board have, have moved so swiftly uh, to, to form this scenario. Um, I agree with, with Councillor Ogilvy that it should be a full council response to this, um, rather than the subcommittee of which, which I used to sit on. Um, because I, I feel that the, the full council would, would certainly have more remit to, um, to challenge this decision from the, the new fire board. Um, I would sort of question uh, what their intentions is behind this, whether it is if it's a purely financial decision that they're taking on this, because in the bullet point 3.2 on the last bullet point, um, they're talking about a suitably sized and presented national headquarters building which to me would have a far greater cost in developing that in the area, as been pointed out, central belt or north of that, than closing some of the control centres around the, around Scotland. And I think that's a point that we should be taking to the new fire board and we should be questioning them on that and asking for their facts and figures in the cost of all this. Councillor Dykes. Thank you, Leader. Um, I do think it's disappointing that we're that we've come to this situation and that's the decision that's been made. But I would also like to put on record that I'm extremely disappointed that a full group on this council has felt the necessity to leave this chamber when we're discussing such an important issue. Um, and I would just like to place that on record. I do think it's important that this council makes representation. Um, we are talking about the possibility of job losses in our region and I think it's important to be inclusive as a council and to put on record our comments. Agree with your sentiments. Councillor Davison. Thank you, Leader. Simply to say, I think Councillor Smith made um, two suggestions. One was that we, um, we, we, we make representations as a full council, presumably via yourself, and also that we take the opportunity that's afforded at the uh, Police and Fire Subcommittee on uh, Thursday. I think we should do both, in my view. Um, I don't think that will do any harm at all, and possibly some good. But certainly, I think both opportunities should be taken. Shouldn't be either or. Gavin, uh, thank you, leader. I think it might be helpful to try and, and, and if help members frame what they might want to say. That, that certainly the operational decision making of the fire service and the police service will lie with the new board and with the chief constable and chief fire officer. However, I think that that this council. Um, received and is a consultee in the police plan and the fire plan and certainly to take a decision that in my view would Im may impact on the risk assessment and public confidence at, uh, before it then consults with the local authority I think is something that perhaps we should be saying that since the fact I learned that they were talking to the fire staff a day before they then informed me that this paper was coming forward which was last Monday so therefore, the paper had already gone public before I was informed that this would happen in the area. So therefore, there was no, there was no ability for us 
then to have commented to be considered by the very board. However, I did note that I read it before I received the call from the area committee that Aberdeen Council and Aberdeen Shannon Greenpan had already made representations that were on the front page of the BBC website. So I think this is something about we don't want to cut across the operational autonomy of the body. However, you cannot say that the very points that members have raised on risk were not a matter, never mind the jobs issues, for consideration by this council with its formal committee. And I think that what we could be saying to them, any further decisions, we would wish the opportunity to debate them and take evidence from our local commander so that we could inform the decision-making of the board uh, rather than now be informed in the consequence of a decision because we're now trying to reverse the decision the board's taken rather than inform the decision in advance. So I think it's, it's to make sure we don't just receive that this is an operational matter response but perhaps a response around how is the consultation on important matters and public confidence going to be taken forward in the future? Uh, it would be, would be, would be perhaps a, a more challenging one for them to answer. Does everyone agree with the sentiments uh, given by the Chief Executive and we'll go down that line? Okay. Oh, sorry, Councilor Dempster. Hey, thanks to you. Now you've made that decision, I, I, I would like to, since we're placing things on record, it might be useful to recognise the contribution the fire control staff have made to the, the, the lives and safety of the, the general public. It's no, well, that's done by the, 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 the Police and Fire and Rescue Subcommittee or here. It's simply no reflection on them what decision has been taken by the fire board, and I think we should recognise the contribution they've made. Okay, I've, I've just been uh, made aware that I've excluded Stephen from the list here. It's my right, Stephen. Right. First day nerves, convener, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's pretty much been summed up by the members and the chief executive up to now. I think. In a sense, all we can really do is, as we've set out in our uh, council priorities, which is strive to maintain the existing levels of police and fire service cover in Dumfries and Galloway, and campaign to locate the police and fire central support staff where possible. Now, obviously, the landscape's changed now that it's a national service, or both are national services, so it could be that we have to take every opportunity that we can to engage with members of the board, especially on Thursday if they're attending. Uh, and maybe look at the future of how to find creative ways to ensure that our risks minimised here and making the case again and again for other ways of decentralising the resources nationally. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Sam, in that last word. Uh, most of what I was going to say is what we said. It's really disappointing uh, what's happened to you. Uh, all, all through the, the Pathfinder meetings that, that Ronnie mentioned, uh, it was stressed that we would try and keep everything as local as possible. And uh, what we constantly go was, oh, nothing will happen for the first year. And we were always a wee bit uh, nervous about what, what would happen in the first year. And uh, I think our worst fears are starting to be founded that although all through the Pathfinder as well, they mentioned to keep everything as local as possible, uh, I, I, I do fear that, that that's not happening now, especially with this decision that's been made. Uh, and uh, I would uh, appreciate any support that we can get to, to, to fight this corner. OK, I think we've got a way forward and uh, we've, we've agreed that. Other business? Thank you.